Hey gamers, today we're gonna look at Sunken City. Let's check it out. To set up for the game, what you're going to do is you're going to put King Neptune right here, take the 10 block, put it right there in the center of the board and put King Neptune on top of it. Each player will take the little player pawn and put it in one of the little four little towers here to begin their game. You're going to set up the road tiles right here under the square that says 1 and then place four face down tiles in the next spot. spots here, leave box 6 empty. Uh, depending on the number of players determines which die you'll be using in the game. This is for a two-player game, black is for a three-player game, purple's for a four-player game. Each uh, player will get their own little player board. They're going to put all of their treasures, so in this case as you see I have all of White's treasures face down here, roof side down. They're also going to grab cards uh, by, by the color of their player pawn. So this is White's uh, player and every player has the same type of cards to choose from. And as you see there are numbers at the top there and of course numbers at the bottom. So what you're going to do every turn is you're going to pick one of these cards. Now once you play one of these cards it is out of your hand. So you'll have to play every card in your hand and then once that's done then all the players will pick up their cards and go again. But you must play each card once. So what do these cards mean? Well let's go into that for a minute. Uh, first off let's say I pick this card. Well this tells me that I can either place one, one building and two roads or three roads. Now any of these cards you can always place, except for this one of course, you can always place one building. But you may never place more than two buildings. So you can always place unlimited roads. So for instance if this was a four I could put one building and three roads or just four roads. So let's say, uh, and you can grab whichever one of these buildings you want to, let's say I wanted to grab the four, okay? Now first off, where do you place these? You must place them on any of the dark areas on the board, so the deep sea areas. Another rule about these cubes here is you cannot place another building right next to it or caddy cornered away from it. They must not be touching each other in any way. And of course they can only be on the dark blue spots. If you don't have an area where you can put another um, building, let's say they all had buildings around them, then you just can't place a building that turn. Now, uh, let's say I place the four here and then of course I got two more roads I can build. So I'll grab some of these handy dandy road tiles. I'll take two of them. And how road tiles work, you just need to cover two squares and you can do it however you want. That way you can do it uh, vertically that way. Uh, when you're moving on roads they only count for one movement. Uh, you may not move caddy corner from a road here. They at least have to have something connecting them before you can move. Same thing with a building. If a building was right there I cannot move caddy corner to get on top of that building. So let's say that was my first road. This is my second road. He's right there. And now you get to move your player pawn. So this one says four times. So I would go one, two, three, and as I got four I would flip over the four token on my board and reveal a treasure. Now I have a treasure in my, in my backpack so to speak. And then move four and that's the end of my turn. Of course I will discard this card from my hand, just put it out in front of me and keep these next uh, five cards in my hand and then the next player will go. So it's going to keep going around like that where each player is going to be uh, putting out buildings picking up treasure and moving around the board and using these road tiles and any of these blocks they want to. Now once you get back to your tower, however many treasures you have that are face up, let's say I had the three and the four, then I could remove them and put them off the board. That means that I've collected them and put them safely in my tower. Now you can hold, as you see up to here, up to 11 treasures. Now the treasures go from 1 to 10 and then there's a 12th treasure. If you notice the buildings are from 1 to 10, here's the four, it actually says to put the 10 there, but there are two extra blocks. 
uh, that come with this game. Uh, by the way, these are nice hard plastic uh, blocks here for cities. I have no idea what these are for. In our game, we just combine them both together to make a huge tower and put King Neptune on top of that. But you don't really have to. It says to start with number 10. So I don't really know what these are for. The game doesn't really say so. But either way, uh, the 12th treasure is always the building that's right here in the center of the board. No matter what the number is, any building located in the center of the board, that's where you will find the 12th treasure. So. What your goal is, is to go around uh, basically uh, the, the sunken city, collecting treasures, and then making them back into your tower. Now this is how the game will proceed. The game will go on. Each player will be throwing out uh, roads and tiles until eventually someone's going to have to land a road next to Neptune's building. Now when that happens, the game goes into a wildly different direction. Now Neptune is available to be moved by the player. So for instance, after a player's turn, he can also move Neptune. Now the rules of moving Neptune are very simple. If Neptune is in uh, you know, a, a, one of your, the player's position, he can move him up to four spaces. And if Neptune is in a player's area, and if you kind of see here on the board, there are these discolorizations on the board. White's very hard to f figure out, but there are these four little squares. If you're trying to move Neptune within one of the opponent's uh, squares, that's when you're going to roll one of these die, depending on how many players there are. Now, moving Neptune is significant because for each square that Neptune uh, jumps off of, that road or city is going to sink. So for instance, if I was going to move Neptune four places, and let's say White was right here on this building, I'd move him one, two, three, four. So I would take these two roads, flip them over, put them in the next pile, right next to the road pile, face down, and then I would remove 10 because he moved off that, put it back up there. Now I would also remove the fourth building where white player was, and white player would have to go back to the tower. And if he hasn't delivered three or four of these two treasures back to his tower, then he flips them back over. He loses them back into the ocean and has to find them again. However, if he lands on the token with Neptune, he's okay, as long as Neptune doesn't move from that road, leaving him stranded. But let's say Neptune killed him. He went back there. Now, it's not too bad because what you're going to do is you're going to get one of these little tokens. And these little tokens can be cashed in at any time after you've been attacked by Neptune. And you can get as many movements as you have face down treasures. So for instance, let's say I had a couple of these treasures already found and maybe a few more removed. If I was to cash in my Neptune token, then I would get to move one, two, three, four, four, five, six spaces automatically. So basically it lets you move around the board a little faster. Now the game says if it ever runs out of Neptune tokens and you get you know washed up by Neptune then you just can't take a token. Now the game's going to keep going around like that. Players going to get washed up from Neptune. They're going to be scoring some treasures on their board trying to collect them all. And after this row of tiles runs out you're going to use any of the face down tiles from the two section. Now anything that Neptune destroys from there on goes to the number three section there. And you're going to keep doing that. You're going to be laying out row tiles and buildings and of course he's going to start moving and removing those back into the next pile. And of course these will just cascade over until you get to the fifth tile. Now once you get to the fifth row here, that's going to signify the end of the game. Now they have this sixth row available because as Neptune is moving around washing up roads, you may throw a few discarded ones in there and that's only there for players to take to finish off the round. So for instance, if white player was the third to, second to the last player to go and red was last but they ran out of tiles right here, then red could grab tiles from six. But you can only grab them to finish out the round. That's the only reason the sixth stack is there. Now once that stack is there, people are going to add up all their treasures. Whoever has the most treasures wins and of course in a tie whoever has the highest numbered treasures and, and grand total wins. And that's Sunken City. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well you know what? I've been looking at this game on and off for about a year and I thought should I get this? It kind of looks interesting. And then finally I went and uh, traded for it and got this uh, 
at one of those book CD, you know, movie DVD places that accept trade. And I saw it and I was like, shut up, there it is, I've got to have it. And so it's much bigger than I thought it would be. I thought by looking at some of the pictures, it'd be a much larger game, I mean, a much smaller game. Uh, the game is kind of fun. Uh, the Everything, the, the look of it looks a little bit cheap and a little bit plastered on there. Like uh, some of the blocks, they look kind of faded and not, you know, it's it looks like a cheap print that was on there, but it does look like it's been underwater, which kind of matches the theme. So, you know, I'm kind of torn on that. Uh, I do like how they're plastic there, and it's a very simple game, an easy game, and actually there's a lot of strategy in here. So this game actually surprised me and disappointed me all at the same time. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm happy I have this game in my collection. I'm keeping the game because I do think it's fun, uh, but very easy. I thought this game would be a lot more heavier, uh, but it's kind of a simple game to play, easy for families to learn, and uh, kind of unique in a way. So yeah, I like it. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on!